Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out on press TV. And, you know, the North Koreans, I believe, walked into that deal in Vietnam at the summit with Trump with a lot of hope of walking away with a deal. That was during a time when Michael Cohen was testifying here in the U.S. And so Trump left and he didn't tell the truth. He said that North Korea wanted all of the sanctions removed and they did their special press conference because Trump did not tell the truth. They only wanted five out of 11 sanctions removed. And it seems like from that point on, this whole thing has declined. You now have the North Koreans going right back to their nuclear program. And they're also saying they are thinking about suspending all future talks with the U.S. They are really upset. You know, when Trump was there, he should have done everything he could to seal that deal. But he was just so out of his mind, worried about what was going on in the hearing. The oversight committee with Michael Cohen, I mean, even if he ran back here, what was he going to do? Storm the room and stop the meeting? Stop the testimony? Come on. That's silly. He should have just stayed and sealed the deal. You were already right there in Vietnam. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video so you can really get a good idea of the intentions of the North Koreans now. There's a possibility there will not be a deal at all at this point. But let me go ahead and play this video. Welcome to this edition of News Review. North Korea's vice foreign minister says her country is considering suspending nuclear talks with the United States. Cho Son Hui says North Korea has no intention to yield to U.S. demands or engage in negotiations of this kind. Cho also says that Washington threw away a golden opportunity and warns that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un might rethink a suspension of missile launches. Last summit between the U.S. and North Korea failed to narrow their differences on dismantling Pyongyang's nuclear program and Washington's willingness to ease sanctions. I'm going to be discussing this this story with our man, Frank Smith, who is standing by via Skype, that is, uh, from Seoul itself. And then I also have Mr. Andrew K.P. Long. He is uh, an international and uh, independent strategist out of Hong Kong also via Skype. Gentlemen, it's uh, good to have you with us both. I'm going to begin... uh, with Seoul and Frank Smith to uh, tell us about the political atmosphere in Seoul and in the Korean Peninsula in light of these uh, uh, new revelations, or if not revelations, new remarks by, for, uh, by North Korea. Frank. Well, we don't quite have an official response from the South Korean government, but certainly there is going to be some disappointment here. The Moon Jae-in administration, that's the president of South Korea, he had pledged a campaign of Um, reducing tension on the peninsula and engaging North Korea. He brought North Korea to the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang just last year in 2018. And he actually put the the initial Trump-Kim summit on the doorstep of the White House last year to to see that through to the June uh, 2018 Trump-Kim summit. So certainly there is going to be disappointment here with this announcement. Also, uh, Vice Minister Cho in North Korea mentioned that there would be an announcement uh, possibly from Kim Jong-un regarding this issue. In terms of the perspectives of the two sides, really uh, a lot of analysts are suggesting that the U.S. came to these talks with a a hard-line position 
prior to the negotiations, they had suggested that they would uh, accept a you know, somewhat of a step-by-step process where they would uh, give up some, uh, relieve some of the sanctions in exchange for a denuclearization measures from North Korea. And North Korea came with a significant offer to dismantle the entire Yongbyon complex in the presence of, of U.S. inspectors. Uh, so it's not really that surprising that you would hear from the vice minister with these comments, particularly given that North Korea's suspension of nuclear and missile tests is an extraordinary give that they have provided the United States and the international community, and they've not really received any corresponding measures in the past year and a half since that suspension uh, was put in place. Mm, Very interesting. Uh, Andrew K.P. Long in Hong Kong. What do you think about this? Of course, uh, uh, Frank Smith uh, pointing out to a very interesting fact uh, uh, that uh, as uh, vice Pre- as the uh, vice foreign minister of uh, North Korea says uh, this has been a golden opportunity that has been wasted. What do you think about it? Uh, I believe that we have lost our connection with uh, Mr. Leong in Hong Kong. My colleagues will tell me if we have him back. So I'm going to continue with Frank in Seoul. Of course, another thing to, um, that comes to mind, Frank, if you agree, is that this is just uh, political maneuvering, perhaps, to persuade the United States to bring them back to the negotiating table once again, and perhaps this time with a plan. Yes, certainly, um, you know, we're, we're seeing negotiations by other means uh, on both sides of the table in private and in public. We had a, a meeting at the United Nations Security Council where they were debriefed by uh, Stephen Beek and the U.S. Special Representative on North Korea. Coming out of that meeting, a couple of the ambassadors to the, US, to the U.N. from, um, I believe, Japan uh, and also South Korea were doorstepped, they were caught outside um, the the meeting location, and they really remained tight-lipped about uh, what Stephen Began told him regarding those negotiations uh, at the Trump-Kim summit. Really, uh, again, prior to that summit, there were indications the U.S. would be willing to move. Uh, one key factor that sort of indicated some problems maybe taking place at the summit was that the agenda really wasn't set even just days before um, the summit took place. And the key sort of hawk on the American team, uh, John Bolton, he was scheduled to visit South Korea. Now, South Korea has said it wants to see some movement, some agreement, it's promoting engagement. It wants to see, uh, you know, a de-escalation of tension on the Korean Peninsula and believes in the step-by-step process that's really advocated by North Korea. John Bolton canceled his pre-summit visit here and he was one of the five negotiators across from the table from the North Koreans at the Trump-Kim summit. He was also instrumental, most analysts believe, in influencing the American president to withdraw from the P5 plus one uh, agreement with Iran. So his presence at these negotiations, his position as a close advisor to the United States is seen as instrumental in the U.S. coming from this hardline position from which they did not move during the summit. Some analysts here in South Korea even suggest that this was anticipated by the U.S. The U.S. walking out of the summit is what you just pointed to, negotiating by by other means, seeking to look for that big deal. Perhaps even the U.S. doesn't want a big deal. It wants to continue with the status quo demonizing and isolating North Korea without pursuing genuine denuclearization and taking advantage of North Korea's, again, what I would suggest are big gifts of no nuclear testing and no long-range missile testing. Exactly. And, you know, one other thing that I'd like to discuss with you, Frank, is uh, your own analysis of this matter. I'm going to um, tell our viewers about, as well as what you've been hearing in Seoul, um, about the role diplomacy plays here. What does that really tell about about diplomacy practiced by the United States. I mean, if you have uh, two negotiations, both of them really bearing no fruit, that has to say something about the way the U.S. practices diplomacy. 
Absolutely. You know, they, they do have 28,500 troops here in South Korea. Uh, when we had the, you know, back and forth uh, insults traded between the U.S. president and North Korean leader uh, back in 2017, there, there was this threat of war that was cast a, across the Korean Peninsula. And gunboat diplomacy isn't really far behind any, any diplomacy um, from the United States. And again, a lot of analysts feel that the U.S. came to the to the Vietnam summit really and was negotiating in bad faith with no intention of of making any movement uh, in terms of addressing uh, North Korea's wishes. We had been talking about the potential of an end of war declaration, a peace treaty on the Korean Peninsula, the possibility of inter-Korean projects being restarted, other measures tangent measures that weren't really, you know, related to denuclearization or the giving up of sanctions that the two sides could have agreed on a smaller step that would be a trust building measure. Again, they didn't enter into any negotiations on these types of issues, which is an indicator that that perhaps the U.S. was was coming to these talks in Vietnam in bad faith. Thank you very much. That's uh, Frank Smith, uh, our correspondent in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, with that analysis, I'd like to appreciate uh, your time, Frank, and uh, I'd like to appreciate the time of our viewers for watching this edition of News Review. So, the North Koreans feel that the Americans lost a great opportunity to make a deal. Now, they're going to do whatever they want. There is no point in Trump complaining when you sat there and you let the talks go over Michael Cohen and what he was saying. It, the whole thing is ridiculous, y'all, and very unprofessional, and it makes America look bad. So... Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.